at it again, and we've got to talk about Vivek Ramaswamy. Okay, uh, because once again, I mean, this 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 guy's like toilet paper because he's on a roll, man. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I know that that was that was a um, terrible joke, but beyond that, <laughs> beyond that, um, yeah. Seriously though, Vivek is on a roll. Uh, this this guy, he he's quick. He's quick. The only person I've seen quicker is Trump. Um, you guys are going to want to see this. Like, share, comment, and hit that subscribe button if you are new. And let's dive in. If this is okay, and uh, I'm just kind of curious on the, the previous question that you yeah. those four things that were provably false. Yes. Were in the, and I'm just kind of curious. I know some of these guys, we've been following some of you guys. I'm curious if there's any national media who actually believe that they were false. That those actually it's a good question eddie so eddie's a one of the you guys are colleagues, colleagues, colleagues two of the top state reps here and i think that that's a good it's a good thing to be curious about just by by show of hands who here is willing to admit that the trump russia collusion hoax was indeed incorrectly reported by the mainstream media is there anybody here able to admit that that was incorrect reporting. It wouldn't be really appropriate for us to answer the question. Why not? Why would that be inappropriate? I think it would be inappropriate. What's inappropriate is lying to the public. We're, just, we're doing our job asking. Well, the public lied to or did the, did the media report on this set of facts that were provided? So, I, so that's, that's a fair question. I actually think that the public was lied to long after the media systematically still understood that this was the product of the Steele dossier. The Steele dossier was a piece of Russian disinformation provided by the Hillary Clinton campaign that was served up to the federal government as a basis for issuing a FISA warrant to then potentially infiltrate a member of the opposition party. If this was Bush and Cheney doing it to John Kerry, this would have been the stuff of scandal, impeachment and worse. And yet I think it was an intentional lie that the media said that that account, which we now know to be true, was actually the Russian disinformation. Now, Shauna, I would be charitable in my interpretation of that if it were just one instance. Let, let me give an easier one. Just by show of hands, does anybody believe the media's reporting about the origin of COVID-19 ran flatly in face of the facts that you have a Wuhan Institute of Virology that was now the likely origin of the COVID-19 pandemic? You all said that it wasn't for a long time. By show of hands, was the Wuhan lab the likely origin of the COVID-19 pandemic? Everybody, media or not? So, so you have reported, the same media that has reported that the COVID-19 pandemic did not originate in a lab in Wuhan, is willing to even say, un unwilling to admit today. The report came out in 2023, so I guess... It was known that there was a Wuhan Institute of Virology where they were conducting gain-of-function research, the very city which was the origin of a global pandemic, and yet the media's explanation was that somehow it could have been any source other than actually having started in the lab. I just think that that's systematic, systematically unacceptable. The Hunter Biden laptop. Is the Hunter Biden laptop story, as reported by the New York Post, which was shut down, had the Twitter account locked, for anybody who is even sharing the story of the Hunter Biden laptop found on the eve of the last election, the media reported that it was Russian disinformation on the eve of that election. Does anyone here agree that the Hunter Biden laptop story, as reported by the New York Post, was indeed accurately reported and was not Russian disinformation, but was in fact a factually owned laptop of Hunter Biden? I mean, you, you got to, man. I mean, your, your paper reported it. <laughs> does, anybody, does everybody else seriously not believe that? I mean, I believe so, that Hunter Biden is suing Rudy Giuliani over the laptop, so I don't think that's... So, so you don't believe, so you think that it actually was the product of Russian disinformation, as was reported by the media... That was the basis for suppressing this at the time. For the Hunter Biden case, yeah. I'm not sure why we're talking about that. Because it was election interference on the eve of the last election. And I think there's the same kind of election interference happening this time around. And I think it's happening, the early waves of it. with. And this is my thing, right? Whatever they tell us we can't talk about, you know what? <laughs> it's probably true. Whatever they tell us is 
disinformation. It's more than likely good information, right? Whenever they tell us um, we're not allowed to say that. We're probably right over the mark. I'm just saying, like, there's this recurring theme, right? With, 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 with a lot of this stuff where it's just like, it's kind of blatantly obvious now what's going on here, you know? Hmm. Kind of interesting, huh? Anyway, continue, Vivek. On the eve of the last election, and I think there's the same kind of election interference happening this time around. And I think it's happening, the early waves of it, with respect to the treatment of my candidacy. And I think that that is likely to be a major problem heading into the next year, unless we're able to open and openly and transparently acknowledge the mistakes of the past. Without acknowledging the mistakes of the past, I think we are destined for an even more dangerous future. And I do not want to see a repeat of what happened in the 12 to 15 months leading up to January of 2021. I don't want to see that in this country. And I worry we're on a path to far worse than that until we have accountability, 360 degrees, for the mistakes that were made in that lead-up. And the Hunter Biden laptop story and its suppression, Shauna, I do believe was a key part of the lead-up to that. I think the suppression of the origin of COVID and the origin of the pandemic was a key part of the lead-up to what happened in January of 2021. I think that the systematic suppression of speech in this country, even about debating the lockdowns, was a key part of what culminated in January 6, 2021. And as somebody who's looking to lead this country and hopefully, dare I say, reunite this country, I think it is critical, it is vital to the future of this country that we not repeat those same mistakes. And yet that's exactly what I'm seeing play out in slow motion, hiding in plain sight. And so it's my concern for this country that leads me to run for U.S. president. It's my concern for this country that causes me to raise what aren't some ancient issues to be swept under the rug. I think that history is relevant to what's happening today. Yeah, um, I agree with Vivek, you know, and my thing is, <clears throat> and this is one of the issues that that I had previously with a lot of this stuff when I was just on the journey to figure out what the truth was, right? My thing was, why do you get so angry when conservatives say certain things? Just disprove it. Prove that conservatives are wrong. And, you know, like time after time after time, it was... One, they could not prove conservatives wrong. They would shout at conservatives, call call conservatives all types. And I'm talking about Democrats here. Call conservatives all types of names or they, they would storm off, which is when I came up with the uh, the saying, when the facts come out, they run line because I saw that a lot. Or they silenced conservatives. I'm like, why do you want to silence them? I'm confused. And, and, and I'll be honest, I was waiting for Democrats to prove conservatives wrong. Show me, prove it, prove it, right? And I'll be honest, I, I, I was getting a little upset myself. I'm like, yo, just, just prove it, prove it. And they couldn't, and they couldn't. And I, I couldn't sit by and, you know, logically stand with democrats after that I, I couldn't i'm like yo and granted i've never been like one to like be deep into politics never really cared a whole lot to be honest with you um but you know when 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 i embarked on this journey which it's been documented i was just waiting just waiting and i felt like i gave them many opportunities and time after time after time they let me down said absolutely nothing, silenced conservatives, you know, banned them from this and banned them from that and took them off of this and took them off of that and, you know, said they couldn't say this or couldn't say that. And I'm like, let them say it and prove them wrong. Go, do it, show me. And nothing, nothing. And so... I've, I've just learned that, you know, um, when you have to use those type of tactics, you obviously have nothing. You have no good argument. When you have to use the, the oh, I'm going to silence you tactic, that lets me know that you know the other person is right. 
That's what you're afraid of. And in, in my humble opinion, that's what that says to me. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what that says to me. That says to me that you know that the other person is right. That's why you're doing that. That's why you called them all types of names and shouted them and called them, you know, this or that and blah, 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 blah. Or that's why you storm off. That's why you run away. Because any logical person that was faced with, you know, uh, these misinformation uh, tidbits or, uh, you know, these extremist talking points, any logical person would just dispute it. Any logical person would just prove them wrong. The same way that I have in my discussions with individuals, whenever they've brought up something that, you know, is a left wing talking point, like I just prove it wrong. I prove it wrong. Or I ask them a question or like um, one of the big ones <laughs> is people say um, Trump is racist. And so I ask them how prove it. Show me. You know how many times anyone has ever given me any type of evidence of Trump being racist? You know how many times? I'll tell you. Zero. And you know what I do immediately after that? Every time. Every time. I bring up the instances of Joe Biden being racist. And they say, oh, no. Then I pull out the video. Can't dispute that. And so then I say, well, see, I have evidence. You don't. I can show you video proof. You can watch him say it yourself. You don't have to take it from me. You can watch him say it. Show me the videos of Trump. Let me see. Let me see. Pull it up. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, also, uh, on the Vivek topic, uh, this is from Scott Pressler. By the way, go and follow the brother. Okay. Um, so it says Rhode Island ballot signatures. As of right now, President Trump has qualified for the April ballot. Vivek needs 28 signatures. DeSantis needs 142. Nikki Haley needs 188. And Chris Christie needs 269. And the reason why I'm showing you guys this is you guys remember when they told us Nikki Haley was gaining on Trump? Nikki Haley was this huge popular figure and she was like right on Trump's heels. Now, granted, this is only signatures, right? I understand that. I want to let everybody know. I get it 100%, okay? I can read, obviously. Excuse me. Because I know about, somebody's going to say, oh, Rich, it's just signatures. I hear you. I hear you. But this also fits in line with what I've been saying. So they want to tell us that Nikki Haley is number two, right behind Trump. Look who's number two. In terms of acquiring signatures. Mm -hmm. In every single poll, Vivek is down here. He's behind DeSantis and Nikki. Can anybody explain this one to me? Like this lines up with what I expect it all to play out like. This is how I expect it to play out in the polls or, um, you know, come the election, right? Uh, come the primaries, is Trump obviously far out, you know, blowing everybody out the water, and Vivek coming in number two. DeSantis coming in three, and Nikki Haley lagging behind. That's what I expect. And I said something about that previously, um, maybe last week? I think it was last week, because it... it yeah, I think it was last week because that was when like the polls were when, when um, the polls were first coming out. And Nikki Haley was like number two. And I'm like, yo, how, how is this even possible? Like, I don't want to be a hypocrite because I know some people are going to call me a hypocrite. And so I, 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 I addressed it. You know, I put myself on front street because I know some people are going to say, oh, well, Rich, you believe the polls when Trump is ahead. But you don't believe the polls when Nikki Haley is on his heels. I can see that from a mile away. It's common sense. I already know people are going to say it. So I addressed it up front and I'm like, yes, yes, that is correct. Because I, 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 I see evidence of Trump being number one. I, I see people talking about Trump and I've shown the evidence. I've shown the video clips. I've shown the comments. And not one of those times have I ever seen Nikki Haley being mentioned. Not once. 
I've never seen Nikki Haley's name. Ever. Now, maybe it's there, but I've just never personally seen it, which I think says a lot. If you're on Trump's heels, you would expect her name to be like thrown into the mix, right? Should, should, should be sprinkled in there somewhere. Never seen it. You would expect to see, you know, quite a number of videos. Hey, yeah, Nikki, Nikki, Nikki. Oh, yeah, Nikki. Not seeing it. Don't see it. Right? Um, but I do see that for Trump. I do see it. I see it all over the place. I have seen Vivek going all over the place. Uh, we, we, we saw the we saw the chart. I pulled up the chart um, the other day of how many stops Vivek has had. I mean, you, you'd have to add up like Nikki Haley, Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump to equal the amount of places that Vivek has gone to and spoken to folks. You'd have to all up add up all of their stops. Right. To equal the number of times Vivek has gone somewhere and spoken to some people. Like, Vivek is out here, out here. Like, he, he don't care. Like, he traveling all over the place talking to folks, right? He ain't hiding. He putting himself on front street. And so, I see that, and I'm like, I don't see it for Nikki. And then, of course, Scott Pressler posted that, and I was like, okay. I'm not crazy. Granted, it is just signatures. So, maybe it's wrong. I don't know. But... I feel like that kind of backs up my line of thinking um, on Nikki and where she actually is in the rankings. But I just wanted to highlight that. Y'all let me know what you thought about all of this in the comment section below. Like, share, comment, and hit that subscribe button before you go. It's right up over there. Click that thing. Peace and love. I'm out.